Hey guys, this is Dr. Anderson, and I'm excited to uh, present to you uh, what I would like to call the master class on your restless legs, and why we really do believe that we're able to reverse most people's restless leg symptoms by surgically opening up tunnels that become tight in the lower extremity. And so I want to kind of condense everything together because I get asked a lot of questions about, you know, why, how can that be? And this is something that isn't something recent. We've been doing this now for around 10 years. And uh, what I would like to cover is just a little bit more about my background, uh, number one. Number two, uh, some of the research that we have to really show and back up the fact that this can be caused from nerve tunnels in the lower extremity that become uh, tight. And then also I'm going to talk about what's more of a hypothesis that your circulation may have something to do with this and how that interrelates. And the key question that that might answer is why this only bothers you at night. I get asked that all the time, and I think I have a very rational way to explain that uh, that you'll kind of be interested in. It'll make a lot of sense. So first thing I want to explain is that if you follow me on YouTube, um, you may already know that I wrote a book. And I wrote a book, uh, I think it was about three or four years ago. It's called A Perfect Night's Sleep. And if you want to learn a little bit more about this, understand how I got in this position that I'm in to be able to help people, it's really important that you think about reading this. People get a lot of information out of this. It's got um, some very good testimonials of patients uh, for those of you that like that, to hear these other patients' stories. And it's also got some information about the research we've done. Uh, and it also was endorsed by uh, Dr. Lee Dellen, who uh, was a gentleman at Johns Hopkins, uh, who is a past professor of neurosurgeon and, and plastic surgery, surgery at Johns Hopkins. He was the original doctor that got me interested in working on the peripheral nervous system in the lower extremity. Originally, uh, doing surgery on nerve tunnels in the foot and leg to reverse the symptoms of neuropathy. The other, uh, the other doctor that endorsed this is Dr. Marie Samanow, who is the first doctor to do a face transplant. Uh, that's been a while ago, but really interesting lady uh, that also endorsed this book. So as I think he mentioned, he calls it a scholarly book, <laughs> meaning that uh, there is evidence to support that what I do is a very valid thing. So again, it's called A Perfect Night's Sleep. It's on Amazon. You may want to consider buying it to read that. Uh, the other thing is we have published one paper, and for those of you that like that kind of information, it might be kind of dry for some of you, but it's uh, from Frontiers in Neurology. Uh, it's called Nerve Decompression and Restless Leg Syndrome, a Retrospective Analysis. And basically, we go over the history of restless legs when it was first discovered, and all the different therapies that are currently used, the main ones. And then in the, the latter portion of this, we actually go over evidence that we have, and a lot of this is subjective evidence from patients of the improvement that they experience by having surgery for the restless legs. Then the third thing I want to cover is we have a paper yet to be published. It's right now uh, in its final process of getting published, and it's going to have even more rigorous data to back up why this can work for you. Now, this study, this paper is going to have some objective data that we did in the operating room. And what we did when we were doing surgery on one specific nerve tunnel that we were opening, and again, just to review this for you, when we open these tunnels, think of it like doing carpal tunnel surgery. And so when we were doing surgery, we would stimulate the nerve that we were operating on before we opened the tunnel. And by stimulating the nerve, it sent a signal down to the muscle. And then we did it again after the tunnel had all the pressure released, after the nerve had all the pressure released by opening up the tunnel to see if there was an improvement of the conduction of the nerve into the muscle. And you would measure how, how well that muscle contracts. And it was measured in millivolts. But this is just, uh, and this says NIM because that's a NIM measuring tool that we use. It's called a NIM device. And so this, this over here represents uh, what's called the perineus longus muscle. That's a muscle in the leg. This is a tibialis anterior muscle. So this is one muscle group. This is another muscle group. This is how much the, the amplitude here, the height of these bars indicates how much energy was being, uh, or how much of a signal was going into the muscle before the tunnel is opened, and then this is afterwards. 
And the same thing for this other uh, muscle group. This nerve supplies, func supplies impulses to both of those muscle groups. So you can see a big amplitude change after with the uh, kind of orangey bars compared to the blue bars before. So again, that's really objective data that you can measure in millivolts. And this is you know, around 8,000, 8,500 versus beforehand was down around 6,000, uh, maybe 6,500. So again, that's objective data to show that not only people are saying they're better, but the nerves are saying so too, <laughs> based upon the testing that we did. So again, that's not in the present study that you can read, but it's gonna be in a second study uh, yet to come. Um, so let me go back in time. A long time ago, two decades ago, I was trained by Dr. Johns Hopkins. Uh, and this doctor trained me to do surgery for neuropathy, uh, opening up approximately three different tunnels. And then about 10 years ago, uh, I started to notice that there are some people that I was operating on that had mainly neuropathy, but they also had slight symptoms of restless legs. And a, a few of them I would take back to surgery and I would open up an additional nerve tunnel. And this particular tunnel was kind of on the lower part of the leg, uh, right above the ankle joint. And uh, when I opened it, it, these other symptoms that seemed kind of like neuropathy, but really were maybe more of a pulling or creepy crawly sensation, maybe even a cramping sensation. By doing that, they were much more pleased with the results of the surgery. But it wasn't like neuropathy. It was really more like maybe possibly uh, restless leg type symptoms. Um, and then another tunnel became um, known and that's called the solar sling tunnel and that's back in the upper calf area. So one was down here in the lower leg and one was in the upper calf area. The solar sling was discovered and then that really changed things. So I started going from patients having primarily mostly neuropathy, neuropathy with a little bit of restless leg symptoms on the other top side of the scale excuse me, going to patients that had a lot of restless legs and very low neuropathy symptoms. So, and some of you listening might have different uh, mixtures of both. It's not that uncommon. And uh, so that's where this all started. And uh, so it wasn't on, it wasn't an immediate thing. It wasn't like some epiphany I had. It's just, I gradually did it on a gradient and became more and more confident over time that I was able to help people that had mostly restless leg symptoms, which are going to be, and just to review for those that you that are maybe new to this, it's going to be anxiousness, nervousness, that's one of the main things. You're unable to sit still, you want to get up, you want to move, and especially at night, it tends to happen, but it may happen during the day when you're sitting or, or sitting in a car, maybe you're on a plane or out to dinner or going out to a movie. Really common complaint. Another one might be cramping. Another one might be creepy crawly sensations. Um, and see if I missed anything. I think those are the main things. And just pain in general can be part of restless leg symptoms. So, um, so let me talk more about uh, the nerve. So I kind of explained the nerve tunnels. And I want to get into some other aspects of restless legs because I do think it's mechanical. I think the problem can begin and end in the legs. We have people from like eight, nine years ago that are still restless legs free uh, where we did surgery and never came back. And so again, it's mechanical. I don't think it is necessarily metabolic. Uh, and that's the main thing you're going to be hearing. It has to do with your iron. Maybe it has to do with dopamine levels in the brain, etc. Um, I also want you to understand that when we're talking about mechanics, that if we skip down here, it's more common in women than in men. Uh, and it also tends to be familial. It tends to run in families. Well, what does that mean? It suggests to me that people inherit, inherit this propensity to have tight tunnels. I really think that's true. Uh, there's lots of anecdotal information to back that up. Just the fact that, that it, it happens more in families and the fact that surgery works. It's kind of like, I don't think medicine's ever been sophisticated enough to figure out, well, why does somebody get carpal tunnel syndrome really easily? They type a little bit and they get it and other people do manual labor their entire life, they'll never get carpal tunnel. Medicine has never asked that question. It's never, there's never been a, banana, a demand to do that because people just get the, the problem with carpal tunnel, they have surgery, and that's how it's treated in the upper extremity. So when I'm talking about this in the lower extremity, it's a whole other way to, to think about it. 
And, um, and when you look at the research, we were kind of amazed when we did our initial paper. There's very little, if any, research ever that's been done, that's been published, to talk a lot about the peripheral nervous system and lower extremity. It has to do with all these other metabolic processes. Uh, again, getting back to you know dopamine levels and iron, etc. Um, a couple more things I want to mention. Uh, well, before we do that, let's get into the circulation because I think this is interesting, and this is going to answer, I think, for most of you, this question. I think this is my hypothesis, my idea as to why this is a problem, mainly when you're laying down and sitting. So we got to go through anatomy. So I need to go dive into the anatomy of the lower extremity uh, and various aspects before we can get into the reason why. <laughs> so first of all, um, we have arteries. This would be rec uh, uh, established with this red line going down the arrow. Obviously, you have the blood is pumped from your heart. Uh, arteries are stiff, and the arteries going down to your foot have a pretty big lumen. It's not a it's not very compressible. An artery can't squeeze on it and compress it very well. And but it's a high pressure system. Blood gets down to the foot very easily. Once it gets down there, it's got to make a U-turn. It's got to go all the way back to the heart. And that in itself I think is an amazing phenomenon. So but how does it get back up? Well one thing, these veins have one way one way one way valve so that with the blood goes up, these valves block any uh, backflow of blood going back down to the foot. But even more importantly is any kind of contraction of the muscles pumps that blood back up to the heart. It works extremely efficiently. And, um, but the veins have to be very compressible for them to respond to the muscle contraction, if you can imagine that. So a little bit of squeeze from the muscle helps it pump right back up to the heart. Um, and that's how it makes its way back up. Now, let's skip over and explain something about these veins, about the nerve tunnels. The two specific tunnels that I think are primary culprits just happen to have veins and arteries in the area, and especially veins, and particularly in the soleal sling area. So what I think is happening right adjacent to the nerve, and we have evidence that the nerve gets better from the surgeries we do, from the studies, we don't have that evidence from the, the circulation, circulation, circulatory system. But what I'm trying to say here is, if this is an artery, it's got a, and this is a tunnel, let's say, that's an artery. This is the nerve, that's a vein. Vein, it's oval shaped, very easily compressed. Nerve is also kind of soft and compressible. Both of them have a negative effect from too much compression. And what what I think is happening is you're getting enough squeeze or compression on the vein to not allow blood to get back up to the heart. So there's a couple things that you need to understand about this is there are leg compartments. All the muscles in the legs have compartments. These compartments have fascial tissues around them. You might eat steak, that sounds kind of gross, but when you eat meat, that dense connective tissue is the fascia, and fascia has a function. It isolates muscle groups from each other. It also has a function of creating a confined space, so that when those muscles are contracting, that's going to help pump blood back up to your heart. It's like a pumping system. And uh, very interesting how that will work. So, so when you have compression in these nerve tunnels, I think you're also having a bit of compression in the compartment, and that's not allowing blood flow in the venous system to get back to the heart. So that's why at night, if you're laying down, um, you're resting, you're sitting, blood starts to stagnate. It gets down or through the arterial system, has a hard time to get back up, and I think it builds up some pressure in those legs. And so when you get up and walk and you move, all of a sudden you feel better, you feel relief, because the blood flow is recirculating back up to the heart. Um, and the two things I want to emphasize again is the soleal sling back here in the upper calf is where a lot of the venous blood is trying to get back up to the heart. And that's where the vein, the venous blood, is leaving 
this leg compartment in the back of the calf to get out of that compartment to get back up to the to the to the heart and to exit that that compartment it's got to go through the tunnel that tunnel is also pressing on the nerve so I, I find it a challenge sometimes to explain this but I hope you're that's making sense so I think it just helps support it's one more thing that I think helps you to trust the next and understand that this really is an issue with compression in these nerve tunnels but it's also a, a problem with compression on the veins okay now a couple other things I want to jump into women tend to get it more than men well here we go again I think that's more anecdotal evidence that that it is having to do with these leg compartments that are pressing with their nerve tunnels uh, on the nerve. Why, why could that be? Well, women, we know, have fascial tissues in their legs that are denser, they're tighter, they're not as elastic. Men have fascial, fascial tissues in their legs that expand more, they're more elastic because we have testosterone and our muscles have to have the ability to expand in those leg compartments. Women, by the way, if they work out a lot in their lower extremity, tend to get compartment syndrome because their fascial tissues just can't expand enough to allow for muscle, uh, increased size of the muscle. Men don't have compartment syndrome as much. Uh, women also have to have tighter fascial tissues because of pregnancy. When they're carrying a child, it builds up the venous pressure a lot. They're carrying a child in the abdomen and the venous blood trying to get back through the abdomen up to the heart. I, I've read, I think it's approximately, the venous blood pressure goes up by a factor of three. Three times more pressure in a pregnant lady than non-pregnant. So that's going to build up a lot of backflow in the legs. And if they had fascial tissues that weren't very tight, and, uh, and they were, if they were very elastic, their, their legs would get very enlarged, and they'd have a hard time getting that blood back up to the heart. So uh, a lot of anecdotal things to back up uh, what I believe is the problem. So with the venous system, I hope that makes some sense. So those are the basic principles of why I think uh, we can help you. It's not metabolic problem. I really do think a lot of this is uh, mechanical and we have people most every week of the year that we treat from out of state even from the other countries that come here and have been very blessed to be in this position uh, to understand how this works and really do the first study on this like I say hopefully we're going to have another study to come out so uh, I think that's all I have for now hopefully that makes sense as to how you too can get relief from your restless legs uh, and uh, there's, there's hope for you I know this is different for you. You've got to step away from the crowd sometimes and, and do like so many people do. It's important to read the book, read the study, make sure you go to our YouTube channel, Anderson Podiatry Center, uh, and it's very informative. There's lots of good testimonials and more educational videos. So again, those are just the highlights and I hope that helps you understand how this can be the right thing for you and how it's another option that you may have and to finalize this and to conclude, you don't have to be on drugs. <laughs> That's probably my biggest thing I want you to understand. Don't accept the narrative that you need to stay on medication. And because this is a very unhealthy problem if it's severe, and it can be a life changer to get this reversed. Because people do have chances of early death the longer they have this. Because the lack of sleep has a very detrimental effect on your health your physical health, and not only that, but your mental health, as a lot of you can probably relate to. Relate to. So thank you for watching, and I hope that help you, helps you to understand a little bit more how surgical decompression of your nerves can reverse your restless legs. So thank you for watching.